With the Tronx Seymour 1 I received my first 3D printer for clay and similar ceramic materials. Compared to classic pottery or modeling, these materials can be shaped in a completely new way with the device. Of course, the printer can only be used to produce blanks that have to be fired in a subsequent process in order to obtain ready to use ceramics. The Moore 1 is a fairly compact device that occupies little space on your workbench and can be quickly put away after use. The delivery includes the tools needed for the assembly as well as accessories and spare parts. As always, high resolution photos of the entire package contents can be found on the pages of How Open Is This Gadget. The Moore 1 is delivered almost completely assembled. Only the mechanism for feeding the material has to be assembled from a few parts. The extruder must be attached to the X axis. And a few cables have to be plugged in. The axes are guided by steel rollers along steel rods. The X and Y axes are driven by timing belts, the tension of which is adjusted by moving the Y axis motor... ...or the deflection roller on the X axis. The Z axis is driven via a spindle. If everything is adjusted correctly, all axes run smoothly. The maximum working area is 18 times 18 times 18 centimeters. The main board is located in the base of the printer. The stepper motor drivers are soldered to the circuit board. A total of 5 pieces is required, one each for the 3 axes and the other two for the material feed and the extruder. The microcontroller is of type STM32. After switching on, the main menu appears on the well responsive touchscreen. The first step in preparing for printing is to level the print bed, which is done semi automatically. The print head can be moved to the corner points of the print bed via the touchscreen. Then the screws must be adjusted so that a gap of 0.3 to 0.5mm remains between the print bed and the nozzle. Unfortunately, the printer doesn't come with a plate of such a thickness, so I use the scraper, which turned out to be a bit too thick. The screws are adjusted until the metal plate fits tightly between the print bed and the nozzle. The next step is to fill the storage container with clay. The printer comes with two lumps of clay, each weighing one kilogram. This must have the right consistency and should not be too dry. It must be placed in the storage container without too many air bubbles. Too large air bubbles in the system will ruin a print. The printhead cannot push clay that is too dry out of the nozzle. The material supplied was not supple enough, so mixed in some more water. Air bubbles can be moved out by shaking the container. When filling the storage container, I kept knocking it on the table to get the air bubbles out. 
I closed the opening at the button with a piece of foil. Do not knock the storage container too hard, otherwise it will be damaged. Placing a cloth underneath is a good idea. The extrusion takes place in two parts. The large extruder motor uses a piston to press the material from the storage container through a transparent hose towards the printhead. There is a conveying screw in the printhead that then presses the material out of the nozzle. Once the printer is filled with material, the first job can be started. Print data is processed in the form of G-code files, which can be generated from CAD data using any slicing software for filament printers. The files can be transferred to the printer via microSD card, USB stick or USB interface. The first attempt at printing turned out to be a failure. However, I didn't cancel the job immediately, but rather experimented a little with the parameters. After I set the extrusion rate to 200%, at least some layers printed better again. The advantage of printing with clay is that misprints can easily be recycled. So back into the vat with the failed ways. On the second attempt, the extrusion rate was 200% from the start. Now, printing runs smoothly. As with any 3D printing, the parameters have to be correct when working with clay. The waste seen here is stored as G-code file on the included SD card. Printing is done in the so-called waste mode, the wall of the object is processed as a spiral. The layer height is set to 0.5mm, the wall thickness to 1.5mm. The print is finished in about 17 minutes. Inspired by the better results with the slightly thinner clay, I mixed in a little more water on the next attempt. But that turned out to be a bad idea. The clay is too thin, causing the waste to collapse under its own weight. For the next filling, I mixed in less water again. With this consistency, I printed more files from the SD card. When it comes to extrusion rate and printing speed, optimal values must be found for each clay consistency. I print this vase at a speed of 80% and an extrusion rate of only 40% of the values of the G-code filed on the SD card. There is a piece of overhead film on the print bed, which wasn't a good idea as this caused stress cracks on the bottom of the vases while the clay was drying. If the consistency of the clay is correct, the Moore 1 can print objects that would not be possible using traditional manufacturing methods. The layers from which the print is made are clearly visible, but that can make an object look even better, like the waste seen here. The print speed is set to 80%, the extrusion rate to 55%. 
for objects with large overhangs, very slow printing can help the underlying layers harden sufficiently so that the print does not collapse under its own weight. Even when printing slowly, the Moore 1 extrudes the clay evenly. And a 50mm syring filled with water is a good tool for cleaning after the work has been completed. Unfortunately, this is not included in the delivery yet. With this, you can push out the clay of the transparent tube. ...and also out of the extruder, with the nozzle being removed. Once the nozzle has been at least roughly cleaned and screwed back on, the extruder can finally be completely rinsed using the syringe. The Moore 1 from Tronxy is a compact, effortable ceramic printer that's great for getting started with the world of machine controlled pottery. There is hardly a more environmentally friendly and recyclable material for 3D printing than clay, so you can experiment without harming your environment. As always, more information, many high resolution photos of the device and the sample prints made with it can be found on the pages of How Open Is This Gadget? Have a click! With this you get an even better idea of the possibilities the Moore 1 offers. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!